history lovers, welcome to This Tweet in History, the Week in Review, podcasting to you on tape delay from our North American studios. Here are your top stories for the week ending April 3rd, 2010. World Dickline Reykjavik, March 30th, 1949. Iceland heats up over Cold War politics as rioters in Reykjavik protest decision to join NATO. The backstory. Uh, this next number is a protest song. In the years following the end of World War II, battle lines were formed in the Cold War between East and West. In 1949, Iceland's parliament came down on the west side, voting to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The citizens of the capital city, Reykjavik, alarmed at the prospect of remilitarization, took to the streets in a protest that grew into a riot, with rocks hurled through the prominent building and tear gas fired by riot police before order was restored. Sports Dateline Monday, April 2nd, 1977. Red Rum wins World's Toughest People Chase for record third time. The backstory. England's Grand National Steeple Chase is a course so grueling that often only 20% of the horses in the field complete it. It's a course that Red Rum was born to run. Although the horse failed to distinguish himself early in his career, following a bout with debilitating bone disease and a tepid comeback attempt which caused most to write him off, he was purchased by a taxi driver and aspiring horse trainer who moved him into a champion. In the span of five years, he won the English Grand National three times and placed twice, becoming along the way the last horse to win back-to-back, the only horse to win three times, and the only horse to take the English and Scottish Grand Nationals in the same year. Things that make you go on. Great Britain, April 1st, 1957. BBC reports mild winter, dearth of spaghetti weevil in Switzerland, yield bumper spaghetti crust. The backstory. At a time when television was young and spaghetti was one of the more exotic foods in the British diet, the BBC aired a hoax documentary in its panorama program showing Swiss women carefully harvesting pots from trees, as reporter Richard Thimbleby explained the forces behind that year's bumper crust. How years of cultivating had produced uniformly long strands, and how the spaghetti was dried, some to be shared among harvesters in celebration. Among you those who got the joke, some of the BBC indignant that they would use a serious program for an April Fool's joke. Among those who didn't, some wrote to ask for advice on growing their own spaghetti. These latter received the reply, place a few strands in a tomato tin and hope for the best. This week's birthdays, March 28th, author Maxime Gorky. March 29th, British Prime Minister Sir John Major. March 30th, painter Vincent van Gogh. March 31st, mathematician René Descartes. April 1st, composer Sergei Rachmaninoff. April 2nd, writer Hans Christian Andersen. And April 3rd, author Washington Irving. Thank you for joining us for this Tweet in History, the Week in Review. Be sure to follow us on twitter.com slash historytweet and check our archives at historytweet.blogspot.com.